now for something completely different. <laughs> Greetings, prop makers of the world. We are heading into a completely new territory, the undiscovered territory. Well, I'm not the first person to be using a 3D printer, but for me, it is new. I watch many videos and, you know, of course, it is intimidating to watch how complicated they can make 3D printing look. And for a while I put it off, so in the end I decided for my birthday I bought myself a new 3D printer, a resin uh, 3D printer, because I wanted the high quality of the actual final prints. And you know, of course, I get the, the printer and what do I do? I absolutely max out its, its abilities almost immediately. So what I decided to do is I wanted to build the Vampire Killer Whip from Castlevania. And I grew up with Castlevania. It was Castlevania 4 on the Super NES. If that doesn't uh, date me a little bit, nothing will. And even to this date, with its lovely 16-bit graphics, the moment that game starts and Simon Belmont walks out into the opening of Dracula's Castle and that very moody music is playing with the skull rock in the background and the drawbridge as you get into it, it closes behind you, like saying that your only way is forward. It was amazing and it, it stuck with me my entire life. I just love the Castlevania series. Uh, Symphony of the Night is another one of those amazing games. But what I found is I've always wanted Simon's Whip. Now, to get an example of what this thing looked like is hard. There's so many versions of what people thought it looked like, but Super Smash Brothers came out with uh, their Ultimate Edition, and within it, Simon and Richter finally got a full 3D model with their Vampire Killer Whip. Life would be easy if that was the case of what I had to do with it, but it isn't because the pictures of him his hands are too big for the scaling of his body, which means that when you're trying to scale out how something looks based on the size of a hand or by the size of an arm, everything gets thrown when the proportions are no longer what they're supposed to be. So what you're seeing here is kind of a middle ground between the size of his hands and the size of his body. So this thing might look a little bit big, but it depends on what you're looking at. If you're looking at the body, it's too, it's big. If you look at it in his hand, it's the right size. So this is one of those things you'll find that when you do build, like if you're copying and doing cosplay and such, that your ability to nail the exact scale is never perfect, but you can get it close. And this is what this is. This is a close scale, erring to the side of a little bit bigger because I want things to be larger than life. I don't want it to be completely realistic. I want this thing to look like you would see in an anime. Not the Castlevania anime, because that's the Morning Star, and that's a totally different whip than the Vampire Killer. So anyways, I figured I would just go through and explain how I ended up modeling these. These are all done in Vectorworks. It's a program on macOS that allows you to, you know, create 3D uh, objects I actually use it to do my uh, most of my building because it's you know I built a chicken coop with it. I, it's just a fantastic program, but of course once you learn it, you can repurpose it into stuff like this. Now, you can see here the reason I went with a 3D printer on this one is the angles are so complex on this thing that there is no easy answer. Going, oh yeah, that's that's simple. Look at that. You can see just there is no straight angle. So I was looking at this thing. Breaking it down, going, okay, I could build that out of styrofoam, but of course, this is going to have to be routed out. There was a lot of caveats, and I'm like, you know what? In the end, what makes the most sense is to 3D print this. So this became my project to 3D print. Now, the uh, you can see all the different parts here, and all of them, while almost perfect to what the example is, which I'll put up right now, you can see how this is supposed to look. I took some artistic liberties to make this thing work. Um, so what I'm going to show you now is how all the parts break down and why I did things a certain way. So if you're going to end up getting into 3D modeling and 3D printing, you can kind of take up some uh, some bits of advice on this. God, that's heavy. That weighs. That's got to be the. That's almost heavier than this one because I think this one being so complicated and very few areas that didn't get hollowed out. It's a heavy piece. So, 
When I first built this thing and designed it down, I wanted to figure out exactly how things were going to work together. Now, because we're building a prop, I want it to be like as well, not functional, but strong as possible. And because I'm an idiot and I wanted to put in real chain, like the chain that goes onto this this whip is actually real three quarter inch chain. And it was, it's got this black patina. It stuff's amazing. It looks so good for this kind of thing. Now, what I did is you can see here, this is three quarter inch dowel. And I wanted to make a shank for the actual uh, whip that went full body. So when I put the chain in, the strength comes from the whole whip itself. So I'm not going to be putting a lot of stress on printed 3D parts. So that was the whole concept of how we went about designing this thing. Now, you can see that a lot of these pieces have a three quarter inch hole cut out the middle. This is a uh, yeah, three quarter inch, so you have to go a bit bigger on your hole here but i went to three quarter inch and i cut down the dowel you can always cut down a dowel you can't really add material back here so you can see that this has all been whittled down to get it so when i put these on they fit on pretty easy now what how these things are all built is built around a one and a quarter inch pvc pipe now this is where scaling gets in on the picture you saw you can see his finger and his thumb just touch each other but Technically, this when the moment that does that, this whip, if you put it in the bigger picture, will be too small because you'll be scaling it to the hand rather than the body. So always pay, pay attention to that. Now, you can see here, I did an inset here. And what that does is it allows when the pipe to go in, it has something to fit into so you don't see an edge and it firms it all up for, totally. And in the bottom here, you can see that there's another three quarter inch hole. And what that's set up for is I sanded down the edge so it can friction fit into here when it's all done. Everything's going to be glued, but I wanted to have lots of strength from top to bottom via the dowel. So assembly, once you've, I'm going to be putting up this file for, um, I don't know, I'm going to do with this file yet. There was so much work. I might just put up this file for sale and I apologize but you have to understand there was a lot of time modeling this thing so what you do is you have it set up where you have got your bottom ring and you see I've got a measurement there that was from before on terms of how things just line up you can do this and you'll see on how to do it yourself and then the second part slides over top friction fits again it's actually a little less friction fitting now because I've taken it out a few times and it's smoothed it out a bit then of course the final one goes on. We're going to be lining these up like so. Now at the top, you will see the dowel. Just one second here. There we go. You'll see the dowel sticks out the top, and this is where there's going to be a three-quarter inch hook that's actually on the chain. I'll go over how I connect that, which will actually end up going in almost immediately. Actually, no, I can do it in after. Uh, speaking of which, I can finish that after. So now. Once you've got that, you can see, you take your pipe, put it on, and you finish it off with the bottom. And I'm gonna be putting some foam in here to make it all work together nicely. So just like that, there we go. So once it's all put together, you can see that it really comes together quickly. This is a weird prop because I'm not really showing you how to build it because it's, it's a 3D print, but anyways, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to start assembling this thing, gluing it all together and all that jazz. And then what we'll do is we'll talk about everything after that point. So I'll be back. Now we continue on. So you can see that I've taken and I have put a coat of the dark satin um, spray paint. I'll put a link down below on what kind I use. And you can see I've got a bit of a 3D print pattern down here, but you know, it's not that big of a deal. You're not going to see it too easy, and it's a very hard area to sand. So regardless, that is our bottom all painted up, and you'll see here that I actually painted it on the rod so I could hold on to it while I painted it. Now, this cross is actually silver, or this, this vampire killer is all silver. And I went with a black base because I really like how silver looks when you have a black base and especially with this metallic paint it looks fantastic but as you can see here everything is now glued together and it's a bit it's a bit sticky still because it's you know the paint is obviously still drying now 
I use two-part epoxy to hold all this together. This is held, this is held, those two are held, and that's two held. Why? Because I really like how strong epoxy is for holding something of this size. I have no idea what set is down there. So, that is to this point, it's going to be dry brush. Now, I'm going to go over the handle next. So, the handle, as you know, is the pipe that we used before, the inch and a quarter. Then what I did, as you can see a little bit of rough here, because the paint bound to each other, because I was trying to test fit it, and it didn't... It didn't want to play well, but it doesn't matter. It's all hidden anyways. So all I did is I take a piece of 16th EVA foam. You know, the craft sheets. You can actually see my seam right there. I'm not completely happy with that, but it's better than the alternative, which was if I actually cut strips of EVA foam and put it on. So all I did is I put the foam down, sprayed it with spray glue on both sides, sprayed the pipe, waited about a minute, and then I rolled this onto it to get a perfect fit. And then what you do is just overlap and then cut down and you get a really good seam where it matches up. Then to get these lines in there, you can see it looks like wrapped leather. It's kind of a trick here. I used this lovely uh, kit that I found at uh, Canadian Tire for everybody else. It's just a Fuller, a Fuller, Fuller? Scientific um, wood burning kit. But that tip right there, I'll take it out so you can see what the heck I'm working with. This tip right here is brilliant because all I did is I ran it vertically to get the edge and then I ran it horizontally to chamfer the edge and then it looks like wrapped leather. And it works out really well and this was actually on sale. I, I was really surprised that they carried this because this is awesome. I'm going to be using this forever, but do it outside. Foam plus melting, stinky, yeah, not a good idea to do it indoors. Now, so that is the two main parts. Like I said, this is a bit of a different video because everything's 3D printed. I can't go through all of the uh, the descriptions on like how I built it because I kind of modeled it. If anybody's interested, I can go through and I can discuss how I mentally break down objects for 3D print for for 3D modeling because it's an art form in itself is knowing how to take an item and how to find the best ways to force your program into what you want it to do. Now, the next step is Woo, listen to the noise. This is oh, almost lost my ball. This is three quarter inch chain and you can see I have already put a three quarter inch eye hook onto the bottom. Drilled into the end of my shank for the whole uh, vampire killer, I drilled a hole. You have to pre-drill this because if not, it has a chance of cracking this dowel. And then once you're done, this is going to go into here. But how we go to assemble it is a little bit different because you have to make sure that you can get it in. So when I tapered this, I tapered it a bit more than I needed to. So when it goes in, it goes up taller. It's actually going to be coming down to about there when it's all done. Ah, that's what was inside of there. When it comes down, it comes to about that height when you put it in. I'm going to go higher initially so I can go here and I can attach this chain because you're not going to be able to get this into there once it's down. Then once that will be on there, not much I can do otherwise. And then I attach it right about there. I'm going to glue it, I'm going to put some epoxy on the shaft and get this thing all set up beautifully because of course everything fits together beautifully with the handle on the inside. So I, uh, next time you see this, the chain is going to be attached and this is going to be dry brushed. So I won't go over that too much and of course that's going to be assembled into the handle. Now the final thing that we have to build is the ball and chain for the end. And man, I racked my brain on this one. So this is a wiffle ball and uh, actually I actually had to go talk to a friend to get one of these because I didn't have one kicking around. Now what I'm going to do is I'm taking my other end of the chain I'm going to be attaching it here because if you'll see there's symmetry on this ball but it's not symmetry to the point of hold here so I got to do something to cover that up. Why am I going with a wiffle ball? Because I'm putting in 3D printed spikes into this thing and they're, they're going to be rounded don't worry I don't want somebody swinging this thing around and uh, doing actual significant damage but Hey, you do you. Um, <laughs> the, 
this is just a really good base to hold the spikes into place so it looks good and it's paintable. I didn't want a foam ball because I was afraid of it getting damaged, you know, banging against this chain. So this was actually a pretty big consideration. So I'm going to be going to go and I'm, I haven't designed the spikes yet. I was literally waiting to get this ball. And what's nice is you see all these holes are pretty much uh, a set size. So it's going to go forward pretty cl close. It does not match the actual uh, ball and chain perfectly because the spike uh, the spike distribution on the actual one is a little bit different but in my books this is close enough it'll look good and that's all that matters sometimes so next time you see me I'm going to have hopefully the spikes installed on this and I'll have an eye another eye bolt attached so it'll click onto this pretty easily and the cross will be dry brushed anyways I'll be back okay so here we have Mr. Spiky Ball. And what this was, is this is printed spikes that I made with a half inch base that fits into the holes on here. And I just Gorilla glued them on. It's taken a while actually, because each one's got to dry separately. And this thing is sharp, so please be careful. Now, here, you'll see that I've got an eye bolt, or uh, yeah, I don't know if it's called an eye bolt, no. Whatever the heck that thing is. You see, I've got it bent onto the chain already. You have to do this before, you know, I had to bring this out in my garage and put this into the vise to get this thing on. This here is just a 3D printed cap that I was testing to see if I liked, instead of doing all spikes, doing like spike cap. I like all spikes in the end. But I had these caps left over, so I drilled a hole in the end to give this a nice finish. Now, the problem is, is how do you attach this into there easily? there is no easy way because you've got nothing to support to you know if I had thought ahead and did this before I got all carried away making Captain Spiky Ball here I would have done something a little bit different like I would have put a there, there's a lot not a lot of options so what my option is, is this you see here on the end this is hot glue this is just a hot glue stick that I drilled and set up so it's just the right depth now what I'm gonna do is I've got the hot glue gun running over there I'm going to put a fair chunk of hot glue down onto the inside of this. The moment it's in, I'm going to put this in and the hot glue will bond to itself here. And this gives me a nice big surface area for it to grab onto. It should be enough to hold the weight of this ball. We shall see, but I'm pretty sure this should work. Anyways, next time you see this little uh, gentleman here, it's going to be all painted and uh, dry brushed. I'm painting it at the same base coat as this one. Anyways, I'll be back. And we arrive at the final destination of this different prop build for me. Like, like I said, I, this is one of those things where I'm not really showing you how to do it, but at the same time, I am. This is turned out fantastic. All they did on the black was put a bit of a silver dry brush on, um, and then I verithane the whole thing to give the leather more of a real look and just protect the paint. Uh, down here, Captain Spiky Ball. Um, has been dry brushed again a uh, little bit on the base here just to get it to look good and then of course uh, once I was done because this chain has an oil on it that was just miserable to get on my fingers all the time I just put a coat of everything on the chain as well to finish it all up and that is our final prop regardless I hope you enjoyed hanging out and going on this little bit of a different trip with me uh, What's really neat about 3D printing is this is a combination of the really the physical world of prop making, the 3D printer world of prop making. It's a little bit of everything. I don't like exactly the wiffle ball with spikes in it to finish it up. Regardless, if you like what you saw, please hit the like button. If you really liked what you saw, hit the subscribe button. And uh, tune in for more of this kind of stuff. And regardless, I. Hope you enjoyed and have a good one all.